Hi, I'm Bill Arnold. Thank you for listening to this podcast. There are many more podcasts available at MyFaithRadio.com. Your support makes this possible. Thank you. And a warm welcome to the afternoon show. I'm Bill Arnold. Thank you for uh, joining the program today. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I did, and I am looking forward to an interesting week because it's a short week and Thanksgiving, so it's going to be great to gather with family and friends and celebrate and always enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday. My guest today is Patrick to get things started, and then the Monday afternoon mix with Pastor David Miles and Wyatt M. And then hour two uh, is going to be Jesse Hamilton. He's written a, a book called The Power of Prayer and the Church, the Church's Greatest Need. So that's what I have for you today. So that means don't go anywhere. Patrick is a friend and 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 uh, comedian and magician right from the great state of Iowa and the prestigious town of West Des Moines. And he's joining me now to get things started. I always say a merry heart is like good medicine. Patrick, I think you would agree. I do agree. I also would agree that it's very rare that people would say, I have a, this is a friend and a comedian, because it's very hard to be <laughs> friends with comedians. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, but, but you, you know, make it easy. Yeah, you're the, you, know, you, you, you think it you must be terrible. You see these guys and sometimes the women getting up on stage and then they say, all they talk about is their friends and their spouses. And it's not very nice. <laughs> I don't think I want to be your friend. Yeah. Oh, my. Well, I want to read a verse today that comes uh, from Romans chapter 12. And in verse 11, it says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. So I'm reminded, as you should be as well, as we look at this week and what's ahead, that we should never be lacking in zeal. And of course, the word zeal is one of those words that I think, what does that mean? And uh, yes. it, he commends uh, zeal in verse 11, but he said, Paul says, this is zeal that accords with knowledge. Um, well, so how did we get the word zealot? Because you hear the word zealot now and you say, well, that guy's a little bit too too on board. He's a, he's a <laughs> fan. But if a fan becomes a fanatic and somebody with lots of zeal can become a zealot, but really th- th- those are just negative connotations over perhaps a very positive thing, right? Exactly. So if you have yeah. zeal that accords with knowledge, that's a very important thing. However... You can be persecuted because Scripture also teaches that if you are trying to make a difference for the kingdom uh, and you are talking about your hope in Christ with others uh, based on your knowledge of God's word, you will be persecuted. So it's nice you have zeal, but expect some backlash. It's Well, I, I, think, I think it's disappointing in life when you realize— uh, there, there goes that Bible being right again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, because you you know how you always like to think that well, maybe it won't be like I was told, but but it is true, and then and and it's enough to make people say, um, you know, nervous about sharing the good word because they think, oh, how are my friends going to take this? Are they going to make fun of me? Are they going to ridicule me? You know, it, even these days, you you might run into you know, a human resources department that says, you're not allowed to talk about religious things here at this job. And you say, well, I can't lose my job, you know, but, um, so there are, it's, it's understandable that there can be things to be afraid of the backlash. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, but it's common. Yeah. yeah. So were you, were you in a, a kid growing up that were, were you excited about a lot of stuff? And do you think the emotion of excitement is as strong as an adult as it was when you were younger? Well, I, you know, when I was younger, it didn't take much to get you pretty excited. That's you know, true. a second, a second serving of meatloaf was usually all it took. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, when there's eight of you vying for the slabs of meat on the plate, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, it's you, you point me to anybody from a big family and I will show you a fast eater. Oh yeah. You have to be. And there's no conversation, mm-hmm. no time for it. Keep your head no, down. No, 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 no. You, 
Keep the fork yeah, moving. You are eating. Yeah, you're eating so fast, and it doesn't matter whether you're full or not. You say, I have to eat this fast <laughs> in order to get more food, even though I maybe don't need more food. But but I've got, you know, I've got seven siblings sitting here, and they, they all have a knife in hand. So, um, but, uh, you know, you could be excited about a lot of things. I mean, it, it's fun to watch. Like, you know, my son pretty excited to, you know, learning how to ride a bike and it meant freedom and then getting a bike and then getting a bigger bike. And then, you know, you, then you get your first car and you, oh, you're so excited about it. Mm -hmm. Then you get to a point where you say, well, I'm on car number 12 and it's just a car. And uh, it, it's almost disappointing how quickly you get over the, you know, it's like, aren't you excited you got a new car? And by the time you're home from the dealership, you say, well, I'm used to it. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I think Scripture says never be lacking in zeal, which is knowledge, and keep your spiritual Ooh. fervor serving the Lord. So I think there's some emotional high that comes from the word excitement as if it's going to deliver something when, in fact, I think if we work and live with an, an anticipation as to what God might do in any given circumstance or in any given mm -hmm. interaction— we can kind of boldly go with the Holy Spirit saying, Lord, I'm trusting you to be with me in this conversation, in this job interview, on this vacation. It doesn't it doesn't matter as long as you're putting your faith and trust in him. Oh, I agree. I, I do, and I don't know. Is it do you think that there's a lack of enthusiasm and zeal and excitement as you get older, just because fewer things excite you, you've, you've kind of run the gamut. Uh, is it, uh, are you more of a curmudgeon? You You're know, not talking to uh, me now, are you? No, no, no. Please no, don't no, be talking no, to me. No, no. All right. No, no, I'm talking, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to me through you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if that means anything. No, but, but it's, it's like, there are times where I, I say to myself, why can't, why aren't you getting more excited about, you know, this, you know, when you were, when you were a kid, if, if your parents said, we're going to Disneyland, you're pretty excited. And now as an adult, you'd say, Oh boy, Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. You know, how well, am I going to, how am I going to get, how am I going to get this adventure down to $11 and 95 cents per ride? Yeah. <laughs> because, and you know, the parking and the whole thing. And you say, Oh, is it just that I've seen so much that I have a hard time looking at that bright gold nugget in the middle of it all that is the experience um and may, maybe there's some something to that well I'm, uh, I'm wondering if you are at this place in life where you, you feel more content and maybe your emotions aren't quite as excitable as they once were and you're okay with that and you know there's something about an even keel uh going into whatever situation you're in just with the anticipation that's that you say, Lord, I'm I'm going to move with great anticipation that you're going to do something great in this situation. Because how many times you've been excited to do something, Patrick, and the whole thing backfired on you and your family, and you went, "Whoa, that didn't turn out very good." No one was happy, and you know we spent all this time being excited, and and then it was a disaster. When in fact, if you said, "Let's move with yeah. with prayerful anticipation as to how God might move in this vacation or this yeah. relationship," yeah. Well, I mean, sure, you know, you, but the, and, and I could see where, you know, I, I have, I think we've had the, we've all had the experience where you said, well, it didn't, it didn't work out quite the way I had anticipated or had hoped. And, and then maybe years later you laugh at it, you know, I mean, often I can look back on vacations and if the word Winnebago is involved, it's, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. it's it isn't as promised in the TV commercials. Your freedom. I'm trapped in this thing with eight other people <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> in a KOA campground, and it's really their showers are cold. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah, I, you know, you you and I read a lot of the same, and I think a lot of people did the positive mental attitude books when you're young. You you just you loved them. You you ate them up. You you'd read, you know, Napoleon Hill and uh, uh, Dale Carnegie and you know Zig Ziglar, and you probably remember, you know, Zig Ziglar would have this thing. When, you know, first thing in the morning, wake up and say, hey, it's going to be a super duper extra wonderful, fantastic day and jump out of bed. And, you know, you would try that when you're 15 or 16 and <laughs> you'd have this pretty good day or, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't know if you remember, you know, he'd have people that answer the phones. It's a super great, fantastic day here at you know, Zig Ziglar Enterprises or yeah. 
he'd say, you know, be sure to have some enthusiasm. <laughs> remember all this stuff? Mm-hmm. You probably remember it. And you tried a lot of it when you're younger, and it's not that it did or didn't work, but it's sad that when you get old, you'd say, oh, I will not be saying <laughs> enthusiasm to nobody, no how. Yeah. <laughs> so, is, again, is that just a product of life beating you down? Or, or maybe, like you said, you're on a more even keel. And you say, it's going to be, a, the day's going to be fine. Yeah. It's going to be, it'll, it'll be, it'll be fine and things will work out. You know, maybe at first I might think that something was a disaster. You know, a couple of weeks I talked about all this work to replace a light. And I realized at the end of it that I might've saved my house from burning down from right. all these problems I had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I said, oh boy, I should have been more positive about that. Yeah. Well, I, I think when I go into uh, my day with, your hands open saying, what is, what is it, Lord, that I'm going to have to, what will I encounter today? And, and what conversations will I have? And where will I be a chance to be salt and light in a very broken world? And um, how can I have that zeal that comes, uh, that's in accord with knowledge, that I can have a word, a word from you for somebody? I mean, that to me uh, is a day that, I'm, that I wake up and I say, I can, I can have that spiritual fervor that it t- Paul talks about in Romans. And to me, that's the way I want to serve the Lord. Well, I and, I, and here's something, and I learned this from you, and it's really fun. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, any listener uh, to the show will say, I've, I've heard Bill do that, uh, where you'll ask a question, just not, not a cliche question, but you might say to somebody who's, you know, a, a premier scientist, like, this is the guy, mm-hmm. you know, you want if you want to know about <clears throat> whatever, you know, uh, uh, traveling at the speed of light. Uh, this is the person you talk to. And then you'll say, Hey, what was your backup career? What was your backup plan? Mm-hmm. What was it? What was the thing you were going to do? Should this, you know, speed of light travel thing not work out so well for you? <laughs> yeah. And, and it's fun because you catch people off guard, but you, but, the, but the beauty of it is you find some depth with that person where you, you know, you realize hey, they're normal people and they actually did have sort of, either a backup plan or a backup desire. And, and, and instead of just knowing that one side of them, you're saying, well, I want to know about the side of you that you never talk about. Yeah. That's a fun way to approach people. And, and then they become very open to all kinds of things. Cause then they might say, tell me something about you. And you say, there's this guy I know named Jesus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or you can ask, you know, how your family influenced your career decision or what, what, uh, what did your ancestors do to contribute to what you're doing today? And you say, well, my great grandfather was an attorney. My grandfather was an attorney. My dad was an attorney. And I'm an attorney. And I go, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, well, uh, in, in speaking of sort of trivial things. So my uncle Bob, and as you know, everybody has an uncle Bob somewhere in the family. There's an uncle Bob. And my mom's brother, he sold insurance uh, for a career, and he did he did very well. But then he would do these strange things that I just found the quirkiest, most interesting things. I remember bringing it up to him this forty years ago. I said, "I remember, you know, you were doing well selling insurance, and then you decided on the side to be a chimney sweep." And he was in his. I think early fifties at that point in time. And he bought the outfit and he put the top hat on. He did the whole thing (laughs) and he Mm -hmm. he climbed up on roofs and he would be a chimney sweep. I don't think it had anything to do with money. He said, I I think he just wanted to wear the hat. I'm not sure. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, 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 he was his late forties. He decided to take a piano lessons his whole life. It was, no, I'm going to start doing aquarium things now. And he's, you know, late eighties now. And I still find him one of the most fascinating people to talk to because, you know, you could say, hey, Uncle Bob, you know, you sold insurance. Tell me about the insurance biz. And he can make it interesting as, as anything. Yeah. But then you say, tell me some other weird, quirky things you do, you've done. And you'd say, oh, my, look at that. You thought you were going to, like, you know, make the next pocket fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have been more wrong, but what an interesting story. Yeah. All right, Patrick, I got to take a break, and I'm not sure what the theme of our discussion is so far. How would you uh, categorize what we're talking about? Uh, It is willy-nilly. All right, good. I like that. (laughs) Patrick Albanese is my guest. We're going to take a break and be right back with more. (laughs) 
Hi there and welcome. If you are a new listener, we want to officially welcome you with a free welcome packet gift. Request yours today at MyFaithRadio.com. Welcome to the show. If you just tuned in, Patrick Albanese is my guest. Really hard to call him a guest because he's on every week and he's just my friend. And we love to just yeah. talk about uh, processing life and talking about God's word. And we're in Romans 12 today, if you just joined us. And verse 11 says, never be lacking in zeal. Love that word zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. And I always think, well, we got a big week ahead of us with Thanksgiving, and there may be opportunities to have conversations with friends, relatives, people that you're going to be seated with at a Thanksgiving table. And it might be important to remind you to keep your zeal and keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord, because that's where we are joyful. Um in our hope and patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. God loves uh, that zeal and that, that spiritual fervor. Yeah. And maybe it's, it's fun to try to recapture some of that. That's a good thing to remember because it was when, when you were just a kid, you'd say you could get pretty excited about anything, you know? Yeah. I think there was, there was a lot of zeal, a lot of zeal when you were young. Yep. There was. And there, yeah. and, but just as a reminder, we just want to connect the word zeal to the word knowledge, because you can have a lot of excitement and enthusiasm, but if you don't have knowledge, you're not going to be yeah. as effective um, in your sharing the gospel, because that zeal comes from knowledge, and it's important to be able to uh, defend your faith and and be an apologetic where you say I I know how to answer that question, or you can say I don't know how to answer that question, but I know how to find the answer. And I'll tune in well, to Guy Talk you, on Thursday. Yeah, and you meant to say enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, yeah, re- I, we I, remember some of those cliches. I mean, they're stuck in your head because they're memorable. I mean, yes. remember this one? If you want to be enthusiastic, you must act enthusiastic. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's that's part of the fake it till you make it kind of, uh, uh, of thing. And there is some... I, I do think there's something to that, that, uh, well, I don't know. It's, I think it's always good when you're wallowing to take your mind off of it. And sometimes you find out that later that a, you know, a distraction of just going and doing something exciting isn't as effective as going and helping somebody that going into service is the thing that is the most effective at taking your mind off of your own troubles and woes. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I, I wish I would have discovered that at a younger age because it was always, you know, a pursuit of maybe a distraction saying, well, you know, I need to listen to some, some, you know, people would talk about why is it that, you know, after a breakup, for instance, all the songs are sad and it's like, well, you're listening to sad songs 101, <laughs> you shouldn't, you know, don't do that. But, you know, I mean, if something sad was going on, you could wallow in in things and you would say, well, I need to go maybe see a listen to positive music or go to a movie or or do this or do that. And then later on, you found that serving people lifted it better than anything else. Mm -hmm. It was like God gave you this magic cleansing of, of the pain and suffering that you're going through by saying, I guarantee if you go serve other people, you will feel better. Mm hmm. And you, you, you would think to yourself, how could that possibly be? I feel terrible. How could be helping people less fortunate help me? Well, because you're going to do godly living. You will show kindness. You will be patient. You might yeah. just be full of hospitality. And that's exactly the kind of, I think, fruit that brings about great things for not only people that you're serving, but also yourself. You think, I'm, I've gotten out of my own skin right now, and I'm... I'm not thinking about myself anymore, and that's a good thing. It is a good thing, and you you tend to you know leave with a walk, you know, kind of the old spring in the step. You say, "I feel pretty good." Yeah, yeah. Because maybe serving others, I'm going to go way out on a limb here, is something God wants us to do. <laughs> God, <laughs> just, trust me, just you, going, you going nailed that one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. let me let me just uh, read Romans twelve eleven again. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. That's an important thing. We only have a couple of minutes left, Patrick, and I uh, changed the oil in my snow blower because I live in Minnesota. And you had a, you, you salvaged your snow blower. So as you know, I, like I still have a washing machine that's almost 25 years old. I've taken it apart, I don't know, four or five times. 
uh, I am a YouTube it yourselfer. I say, if, if, uh, I'm just going to keep fixing this thing till till it says we quit. And I've kept my snowblower going, but it's it's a fight. Every year I try to get that thing, uh, you know, warmed up, and I can not manage to get it started. I get blisters on my hands. So this year I've already got my eye on the new snowblower, but I say I will do my due diligence. I will go out and <laughs> give the old give the give the old gal a shot, right? Mm-hmm. But I've I've picked it out. I've I've seen. It. I'm going. I cannot wait. And all you have to do, dear old snowblower that I've kept alive for almost 20 years is do what you always do, not work. And uh, it has sat there since last March. I went out, pulled the cord one time and it fired off. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So now I said, well, I can't go buy the new snowblower. The old one says, no, we're still okay. <laughs> we're, we're still we're still going. Yeah, that's but even it's funny. I had this anticipation of the new snowblower, and now I, I had to make that go away. So you can't justify this purchase. So, I can't. Yeah, I wonder if the snowblower heard you talking about it. Like, if we don't start, it's over. It's over. It's like he's, he's got his look at that. Did you see that? He took the garbage out, and he left, <laughs> left a spot for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're a very frugal guy, and you you make wise choices, and you always are able to get more years out of anything I know than any friend I have. You know, wow. most people don't get twenty plus years out of a snowboard. No, almost twenty five out of the washing machine. I mean, this 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 thing says I can't believe that I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> People come down and they they say, "Doesn't this belong in the Smithsonian? How did you?" And you know, and, I, and suddenly I can talk like I'm a you know washing machine repairman, and I say, "Well, you know, I just put in a new clutch, and I uh, you know I put in I changed the flux capacitor around a little bit." <laughs> <laughs> and people don't ask any follow up questions when you make statements like that, so you're good to go. No, no. They go, obviously, he knows a lot more than me, so <laughs> yeah, they yield to my expertise. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I do, I do take some delight in that, you know, um, just because, I don't know, there's something fun about it. And my wife has picked up on it. She used to buy all new decorations every year, and she doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. And the other day, I saw that she had, there were 20 boxes of Christmas lights. That's brand a lot. New. I said, hey, I said, what are you doing with these? She says, those last year on December on uh, the day after Christmas for ninety five cents each. <laughs> oh, that's a good deal. We gotta go. It Patrick. made me happy. Yeah, have a great rest of the day, and I'll talk to you soon. Happy Thanksgiving. You bet. Thanks. Yeah. All right, take a little break. We come back the Monday afternoon mix. We'll be here all set to go. Pastor David Miles and Wyatt M. Be right back. There's that smooth jazz. It's time for the Monday Afternoon Mix with Pastor David Miles and Wyatt M. Always glad to have us together. Gentlemen, welcome. Hello, Bill. Thank you. Thank good to be you. here Thank as you. always. Thank you so much, Wyatt. <laughs> so good. I like it's, how you did that. Wyatt M. M. I know. It's always kind of nice That's to give smooth. a little pause. A little pause. Yes. Anyway, let me start with Psalm 95 because this is so good. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. David, now we're going to talk a little bit today about what's going to be happening this week. Thanksgiving is, turns out, is on a Thursday this week. And it's going to be an exciting time for a lot of families to be together. And for some families, it's going to be scary because they don't get along. Yes, it is. And, uh... I don't know. I think Thanksgiving is regular on Thursday. I don't know about that, David. <laughs> check your facts. That's, if you want that's to be, news to me. I if know. you want to be on Afternoons with Bill Arnold, you check your facts. I, you know what? That's that's a very good thing, and that's a reminder of what the Bereans did in the Book of Acts. Yes. And so 
again and again and again we say, like plugging into Faith Talk Radio um, is huge. It's a daily thing. It's a daily walk. And like Bill and I and Wyatt, you know, we seek to be faithful to the Lord. And also we're going to say like the Bereans did, for you to be growing in God's Word, for you to be digging into God's Scripture and even saying like, Dig in for yourself and make sure that we're saying what God wants us to say, just as the Bereans did with the Apostle Paul. Pause. I like it. Mm. Now, David, Wyatt, I know there are going to be some people that are uh, have a lot of anxiety about the gathering of family and relatives because of past and history, and I want to encourage you to be as prayerful this week as you can be and ask the Holy Spirit to help you navigate through maybe difficult, uh, challenging relationships, because I think that's how God wants us to be. Yeah, Bill, you're on to something. And, you know, I think it's not for, you know, any small reason that here it is Monday and we're talking about it, because it's giving people an opportunity to prepare um, for these things. And, you know, I heard a really neat message this past weekend, and one of the points that the pastor had made was, the whole issue that the Apostle Paul says in, in uh, Philippians 3 about forgetting what's behind. And so sometimes, you know, um, there's a need to kind of forget things because oftentimes uh, if we could actually have electric generators attached to the battery mines of memory, it would really like generate a whole bunch of energy because like a lot of people are remembering all the wrongs of the past heading into the weekend. Mm -hmm. And maybe a good thing would be to take out a a sticky note or open up your journal and first first spend time with the Lord, you know, journaling out those things, writing out those things that are on your heart and then thinking through all the many reasons you have to be thankful that God is not held against you. All the you know offenses, not not just imagine offenses or perceived offenses or misunderstood offenses, like God who knows all things, all the very many offenses that we've had against a holy and perfect God. I'll humble you quickly, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> it will, you know. And I, I go back to the statement that that I, I've often said. I will never have to forgive a fallen and imperfect Tammy, my wife, more than a perfect and holy God has forgiven me this morning before I put my feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. So like if, if we, if we want to, if we want to start adding up, I think like, you know, the very first verse says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. So I think if we would just begin to recount with Thanksgiving all of the various ways that God has saved us and that he hasn't been a squishy, mushy mishmash, but that he's been a rock of salvation. You're right, uh, Wyatt, that will humble us quick. Well, if I were to just ask both of you, honestly, do you feel like you give God enough thanks in your life? What would be your answer? Well, great question, Wyatt. Um, I would say a verse that I've, memorize and I repeat daily is first Thessalonians five, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen, which is give thanks in all circumstances. That's one of the components of that verse. Yeah. Yeah. And it has that all thing. And my that, kids are gonna crack up laughing because they you see no I say that that my definition of all is all means all and that's all it all means. Yeah. That's so like all pretty circumstances. Straightforward. <laughs> really yeah. means all circumstances. Yeah. And so to your question though, why like do we really or do I fully give him praise like all the time? No. And actually the praise that I give and this is utterly amazing being that he's perfect and holy that he even accepts any of our praise. Yeah. Because like he really is like the passage later says for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. And then it goes on to say, let us kneel before the Lord, Jehovah, our maker. Like, I mean, that that's, that's amazing. The good news is this. Wherever we feel we have been praising and being thankful, or maybe not being thankful, this is a day that the Lord has made. We can rejoice today yeah. and be glad in it and go forward you know, being grateful. Um, I like the person who said, like, Thanksgiving and bitterness cannot coexist at the same time. 
you know, like that's that's a helpful one to write down and take with you into the into the weekend. Like if you want your soul to experience freedom in that moment that just when you're starting to want to feel bitter, that you actually switch to Thanksgiving and then you know, you can be free from the snare that's that the enemy seeks to lay snap, lay trap on you, and to steal your joy, to kill your your peace. I like that, David Miles. You're listening to the Monday afternoon mix, Pastor David Miles and Wyatt M. And we're talking today about Thanksgiving and what is coming up this week, and how are we going to do with our family and friends and loved ones as we gather. Uh, it's always great to search for things you have in common, especially if you know there's divisiveness in the room, that sometimes it's fun to find topics that are gems. Like, tell us again how grandma met grandpa. You know, stories that have that kind of lovely universal appeal yeah. that just fuel kind of smiles and because these stories will all disappear in a generation and you will go, does anybody know how grandma met grandpa? Mm-hmm. And if, you know, if you give them a chance to tell those stories and, and hold dear to the things that are so sacred in the family, you know, make sure that, that the, whoever's preparing the meal, that they're the gem. They're one of the gems that night, right? Yeah. And to remember they they have feelings. And if, if you're complaining about the mashed potatoes because they're too lumpy, that's not very nice. Even if they are, yeah. you know, smile and, and have another scoop. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I remember one Christmas a few years back and like Tammy's uh, dad, Leroy, you know, um, wonderful man, soft spoken when he speaks, it does matter. And we were, we were sitting, um, at the dinner, at the dinner table and we were having a meal. And we're just talking, and he actually launched into some memories of his family, you know, of him growing up and, you know, his parents and grandparents. And, guys, there was not a dry eye at that table. And, I mean, it was just one of those really, like, really special, like, sacred moments. And, you know, Bill, I I love what you just said, like, how spot on to really turn the conversation especially with, you know, elderly parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts and even nieces and nephews to actually turn to these gems that pretty soon they, you won't be able to get them because those gone. people are gone, yep. you know? And so like, so like in that moment, hearing a story that further grounds you entirely as a family, is that worth more than the need to, to make your point? And to be right in this moment, mm-hmm. or is it is it better to understand maybe the richness, and in some ways even the the resiliency of the things that the people before you endured, and sometimes that why you're right it can be very humbling to sit there and say, wait a minute, grandpa and grandma went through this, and I and I'm honestly complaining about this when when they endured these things even for our family to exist. And we've never heard them complain about that. Yeah, yeah. Or they complained to God, and they they put their hope in God, and how it changed our family. Yeah, it really makes you think, and and that's just the key: is take yourself out of it. Don't be selfish. It's not about you. This year's going to be different than what it looks like next year at this time. How do you want to remember this? And if mm-hmm. if you're saying something that, like you said, is making your point and is causing division, maybe it's better to humble yourself and say. Let's enjoy this time together. Find that common ground, like you mentioned, Bill, mm-hmm. and go with that. Or you can ask if, you know, the last year of your life is simply a chapter in your book. What was the chapter about? Mm. <laughs> you can just find out. Yeah. You know, because people do want to tell their stories. They do want to talk about their life, but they they have to know, am I in a safe place? Can I do this? Can I show vulnerability? Yep. And I think there's routines that people have where uh, somebody shows up at Thanksgiving, they go, I know what the scene's going to be when we get there. There's going to be the people in the room watching football that aren't talking. And then there's going to be, you know, all these groups. And so sometimes it's important just to try to break some habits Yep. and say, hey, how about you and I go for a long walk around the block? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're just in a different setting with a different relative doing something you've never done. Mm -hmm. And that's when conversation can happen. And, And saying things like, thank you. Like, hey, this meal was prepared. Someone put a lot of work into it. And like someone who would like to say thank you, or even like asking one of the kids, like, hey, kids, what do you love about, 
you know, Auntie Tammy's broccoli salad, you know, or what's a favorite thing and let them set the pace because it's kind of like sometimes like a standing ovation, how it only takes a few claps. And in the same way, sometimes someone just pausing to change the direct to the trajectory to say like, Hey, what are some things we're thankful for? Or just even if you want to recall something in the past, recall that person who has lovingly served and provided a meal. And and even if things aren't great, like with family, someone still provided a place for your perfectly imperfect family to be there. And does that mean like you have to celebrate everything? No. I mean, the beautiful thing in the book of First Corinthians, the, the Corinthian church was jacked up. They were tore up from the floor up. But what does Paul open up? He says, to the saints in Corinth, to literally to the holy ones and the called ones, even though they had adultery and all sorts of sin and lawsuits, even in the midst of all that, Paul still chose to speak the good and the God even into a group of imperfect. So so we can do that. We can speak truth and we can still be have integrity and, and point out the good in other people. Mm-hmm. You are listening to the Monday Afternoon Mix. Pastor David Miles, Wyatt M., and yours truly. We'll take a short break and be right back. We want to pray for you. We all need prayer. We would love to pray for you. The Faith Radio team is serious about prayer, and we pray for specific listener requests every week. Share your prayer request with us anonymously and securely on our website at MyFaithRadio.com. Welcome back to the Monday Afternoon Mix using my jazz voice. Pastor David Miles and Wyatt M. And we are talking today about being thankful because Thanksgiving is coming up this week. According to David's calculation, he said it's (laughs) on a Thursday... No, Bill reminded us it was on a Thursday. Yeah, that is true. That is how it, this started. It, it did start that way, and I, and you know, it's kind of funny. I had to think for a moment. I did. I was kind of like, wait a yeah. minute, isn't it normally on a Thursday? Yeah. Let me quote John one forty eight. How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, "I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. I, I know that people want to feel known, loved, and noticed. Sometimes that's what." doesn't happen at family events. You're sitting off in a corner by yourself uh, or you don't feel known or seen or heard. And I pray that if that's your concern uh, this Thanksgiving, that God will give you the strength and the connectivity that you need with your loved ones. Yeah. People feel ignored. They do. Yeah. You know, and... Nobody cares about what's going on in my life. Yeah, and that's a hard one because, like, sometimes we can... can, um, draw a fence easily uh-huh. and you know was having this conversation the other day with the leadership for transformation class here at university of northwestern and um kind of gave them a visual when people sit in chairs facing the wall with their backs to one another and they're waiting for the other person to make the first move mm-hmm. and saying well if that person really cared they would come talk to me first you know, and the other person said they're saying the same thing, and the other person is saying the same thing, and the other person. And guess what? No one's going to move. And you know, and I'm so grateful that for us who call upon the name of Jesus and ask for Him to work in us, God took the initiative. You know, going back to First John, we love because He first loved us, and that God so loved the world that He gave His Son and He put on flesh and moved into the neighborhood. And so, you know, just just having, you know, um, wisdom. And I think, Bill, another thing that just pops to mind right now is if people would meditate upon Philippians, you know, four, six through, you know, four through six, and if you would say, Lord, above all things, help me to have this mindset as I go into the holidays, you know, because there's such beauty that I will rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, there's that word again, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. Like, do you want your peace or do you want God's peace? God's peace. 
which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then these verses, if we would really meditate on these and say, God, you know, as the psalmist says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. But verse 8 says this, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Man, if we would just stop right there and make sure what's actually being said or what we're thinking is, first of all, just true, mm-hmm. that would help. Whatever is honorable are the words that you're about to say. Is the attitude and the mindset you're about to have about the other person honorable? Whatever is just, according to God's justice, and as Wyatt said earlier, us really thinking and being humbled by how God's justice should have been meted out to us. Um, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, like seeking to commend. Well, what if people don't understand? No, seeking to commend, Mm -hmm. you know, because God calls you a friend of God now. I mean, and then if there is anything excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, if, and notice it doesn't say everything. It says if there's anything, like you might not like your mother-in-law, okay, or your brother-in-law. Or your own sister. Is there anything worthy of praise? Think about these things. So, I mean, like, if if we internalized and just did Philippians 4, 8, man, I, I, you know, I'm not a gambling person, but I really feel like I really think it could be quite a different Monday when you come back. Mm. If you really, and... And again, this is, again, guys, talk to this. This is why we stress to people about plugging into faith radio. Well, and I really like that because going off that, David, we live in a world where everybody's moving 100 miles per hour, right? They want this now. They want this there. And we have a really quick tongue. (laughs) And we need to just take a step back. And like you said, think for a little bit before we speak or before we act upon something. And like you said, it changes your perspective. It changes the perspective of the ones you love and that you're trying to communicate with. But how often do we just speak what we think without saying or act on something without taking a step back? So it's kind of the culture that's just slowly gotten to this point now. And here we are, and we need to take a step back and go back to the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. I remember a funny statement when I, when I was at Fargo in college and after college, I worked for a telecommunications company and, and my boss was a neat, godly woman. Her name was Ruth Capon. And I remember one day, you know, she was the branch manager for the group that we work with. And I remember one day she, my phone, my extension rang and she said, David, can you come in for a moment? And I said, yeah. And I came in and she said, can you just pray for me right now? I said, yeah. And something had happened with leadership. And she says, I just want the Lord to just be so in control. She goes, because I was about to have a flesh flash. <laughs> and she mm-hmm. said, my flesh was just about to rise up. But And she was like, but I want God to be so exalted in my response. And what was cool about that, one, was acknowledging the reality of what it is to rub up against other people. Two, that she actually called, and I would later do the same thing. Like sometimes I'd say, hey, Ruth, can I just come in and can we just pray about a situation that I just had with a customer? So there's that accountability and being partner with one another. And then also just saying, Spirit, take my emotions and the and my natural fleshly way of wanting to respond and change that into something that's going to glorify you. David, I especially like that you brought up Philippians 4, 8, because it's a memory verse of mine, and it is something that you could bring up at Thanksgiving. Can we talk just for a, a minute amongst ourselves about what is true? Can you? Can we all come up with a true statement? Maybe the true statement, the only thing you can come up with is it's Thursday and it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> the fourth Thursday. Of it, it's the, the fourth, fourth Thursday. Thursday. Or maybe someone says, I love my mom. Or I am so grateful that I have um, the job I have. And that's something that's true to me. Uh, and then you move on to something that's noble, something that's uh, right or pure or lovely or admirable or Anything is excellent or praiseworthy gives a lot of topic to discuss that will focus the mind to good things. And it gives us a way out because, you know, in Proverbs 18, 8, it says the words of a gossip are like choice morsel. They go down to the innermost part. New Living Translation says rumors are a dainty morsel that sink deep into one's heart. The English standard, the words of a whisper are like delicious morsels. They go down to the inner parts of the body. And so sometimes the the kind of gossip 
that can go on that becomes the seedbed. And, you know, one of the things is not getting in what's a term called triangulization. And so that would be like me talking with you, Bill, about Wyatt. But well, let's do it. There. Oh, wait. You we're know. not supposed to do that. Right. Oh, okay. But if, but <laughs> well, if I were... That sounded like fun for a minute. I would say, I liked how you just jumped on that right away. <laughs> I couldn't wait. <laughs> but the cool thing about it is we've been equipped because, Bill, your, your memory verse would be as if I started on, on Wyatt, if there's anything worthy of praise... Let's like, talk about that. Yeah, because I could be like, man, you know, Bill, why, you could be like, dude, Wyatt's an amazing producer. He is. And he brings the spirit of God and his great care for people, you know, and like people don't get to see Wyatt off the air and how he he embodies the, the fullness of Christ towards other people. And, 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 and so like that just took a conversation of a complaint in a completely different, uh, different direction. Yeah. And another mature response would be like, hey, you know, Dave, yeah, Bill? How about we go get Wyatt and let's have this conversation with him? Yeah, because that'll fill his tank if we repeat practically what we said to each other about him. Yeah, and also if I'm trying to be negative, then you could be like, you know what? Why don't we have the conversation with Wyatt? Yeah, let's bring him in. You know? Yeah. And it's, well, you know, Bill, I don't really think it's that important. Well, you know, Dave, it was important enough for you to bring it up to me. Yeah. And we want to do these things that glorify God in this moment. So, like, if you're wanting to be constructive, then we're at the second part of— uh, Matthew 18, and I'm happy to go with you to Wyatt to have a conversation if God is leading you that you need to resolve this in a healthy way. But we're not just going to be tearing down people. Well, and if you're not doing that, David, if somebody comes to you and complains about somebody else, you may think to yourself, well, they're saying it, I'm not participating in it. But in a way, you are because Mm -hmm. you're not stepping in and doing what's right Mm -hmm. and calling it out. Yeah. You're just as guilty. Yeah, I've often responded when people would come to me. I'm like, listen, now— you know, Wyatt, if you're coming to me about Bill and you're wanting to be like have a sounding board so that you, instead of sticking your foot in your mouth, you don't stick your hip joint, I can do that. But if you're basically asking me to be your British Petroleum where you just want to light a match and just light up fire, sorry, bro, I can't do that. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and it's not something that you would want me to do to you with Bill. So I'm not going to do that with you towards Bill. That sounds good. And just, I think, a reminder to try to keep the precious things that you have in agreement at the forefront. Because we're going to have differences of opinions on things. You know, heaven forbid you get in discussions at, you know, Thanksgiving on the hot topics. Yeah. uh, News, politics, those sorts of things. But you have to keep at the focus what is so precious. And that is relationships, love for each other. Uh, you know, being honoring to God and glorifying him and all that you do and say. And then you can agree to disagree with your loved ones. You can right. do that all day long, but be kind and tender hearted toward one another, forgiving one another as you have been forgiven, as it says in Ephesians 4.32. And think through like, you know, in the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey would talk about the circle of influence and the circle of concern. The circle of concern is things that you may be concerned about, but the circle of influence are things that you can actually impact. So, yeah, there are things going on in our world right now of which there's great many very, you know, opinions and there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, smoke without fire and heat without light um, that's going on that you can. And those are areas of concern. But like what you said earlier, Bill, the circle of influence is hearing about grandma and grandpa and how they've walked a long journey of faithfulness with God, perfectly imperfect. And you know what? There's so much news that you're going to hear and you're going to, you're going to lose. But hearing that story, you will take that with you and you will share that with your family. So allowing the things that are truly influential to be in the circle Mm -hmm. of influence over these holidays. Yeah. David, would you walk us out with a prayer for every listener regarding coming up this Thanksgiving, which I believe, according to me, is Thursday? Yes. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much because, you know, we we have learned that you are the great God who is our maker, and we would just ask uh, that our hearts would be turned to you. Will we take the words of Proverbs 18, 21, that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So help us to speak words that bring life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor David Miles, Wyatt M. We're going to take a little break. Lots more coming up in just a minute. We're going to talk about prayer. Uh, Dr. Jesse Hamilton joins uh, me, and I can hardly wait.
Thanks for listening. Programming like this is made available through your support. Information available at MyFaithRadio.com.